All right, hello everyone. Hello, friends of astrology. This is gonna be a technique-centered video. I have two prajnas, two examples that I'm gonna to give to help people have a better understanding of prajna or orary astrology as it is known in the West. All right, so let's get right into it. Today is May 24th, 2018. I think it's about yeah, 12, 22 p.m. Okay, so here's the chart of one prajna I was asked back last September, September 1st. So uh, this person asked, um, should I invest in Coinbase, this um, cryptocurrency? I've had a lot of people ask me cryptocurrency related prajna. So if you're into that and you want to know, um, I've been helping people out with a lot of that stuff. So if, if you uh, are curious about that, here's an example. So this guy asked about this particular cryptocurrency. There are a lot of those. Um, I talked about why I think that's happening and, and all in that Saturn and Capricorn video. Um, so watch that if you're a little bit, if you're curious more about what I think about Bitcoin in general. But um, so he asked if should I invest in this particular cryptocurrency, Coinbase. Okay, so to begin with, this ascendant is Scorpio. Um, in Prajna, if you find a fixed sign on the ascendant and they're asking about if they should do something, it oftentimes implies there will be no change, like it will be fixed, you know? Whereas if it's a changeable sign, it right away does imply a little bit of a change. There may be a change. Could be good or bad still. And then if it's a dual sign, if it's in the first 15 degrees of the dual sign, it'll be fixed. So, or closer to the fixed sign, so it still has that fixed energy. So it may not be as much of a change. And then if it's in the second half of a dual sign, it may imply more of a change. But that factor is, uh, is kind of easily overcome by other more important factors. But it is, it is saying no change there, so I'll, I'll make a note of it. I usually do make a note of that initially. More importantly, though, where does the Ascendant Lord go? It goes to the 10th house. That's good. That's a good house for action, for karma, for, you know, okay, this is a positive action to take, right? Now, when it comes to investing, though, investing is the fifth house, if you ask me. Um, and so the fifth house lord would be the lord of the objective, the lord of the investment in this prajna. The planet in question of that is Jupiter. Jupiter is ruling the fifth house. And Jupiter's in the 12th house, and it's with the 12th cusp too, which could mean this can be tricky because 12th house is a house of loss, but it's also the house of expenditures and expenses. So the Prajna texts say that if there's a benefic in the 12th, it's a good expense. But you also don't want to see a benefic in an enemy sign either, you know, which Jupiter is starved in Libra. So that alone that was sort of mixed you know as i saw that i wanted to see if there was a connection between these two if you've studied prajna you know that the applying aspect means they'll come to that thing the separating aspect means they'll separate from that thing so this the ruling planet mars is aspecting the fifth lord of investments but it's separating from that jupiter so that's not really what I want to see because that means that the better investment or the better opportunity has already passed for them to invest in this coin base. Um, if it was applying though, it would mean, oh yeah, you should invest. You're approaching a good time for this. But no, it wasn't. It was saying no. And is that aspect that they're making is a secretly friendly aspect as well. Um, so there's something that could be friendly about that uh, but we don't know yet. Um, so uh, I, I then, let's see what my notes are. What did I see after that? Um, then I looked at Mercury. That was what really drew my attention. Mercury was exalted just the day before when it was in Virgo and it went retrograde and retrograde away from its exaltation. So Mercury had just been exalted and was retrograding from the 11th back into the 10th. 
and was now in Ithasala with Mars, the Ascendant Lord. If, like I say here, if Mercury was just ruling the 11th house, I would like that because that would indicate, oh, there, Mars is applying to the 11th Lord, there's a gain. Okay, then maybe they should invest. But what's interesting is Mercury is also ruling the 8th house, so that kind of is the worst house for an investment, you know, it represents death. And so it actually could also be interpreted as reading, you know, the death of the game is what Mars would be applying to. This sort of thing itself can needs to be um, can in, be interpreted different ways. The reason that I saw this as bad, whereas in another day on another project, I might say an example that a planet applying to the eighth and eleventh Lord can be good, because the eighth house is neutral. Like it doesn't determine whether a planet is friendly or en enmical when you learn about planetary friendships. So. The, uh, so this can go other ways. The reason that this, I actually judge this as bad, being meaning don't invest, is because Mercury was just exalted in the 11th, and then it's retrograding back into Leo, and it's becoming a cruel graha as soon as it enters Leo because it's with other cool planets. So it's kind of becoming much more cruel, you know, because it's with Mars and Rahu versus just the sun, which it would be ruling when it was in Virgo. So that's a major thing. And one thing you have to know about the, the Tajika uh, texts, they have rules for particular avashtas where like the thing is an aspect or is an applying to the planet and it's about to be in debilitation. That means the thing will be lost or be, you know, debilitated. And then if the thing is just about to enter exaltation, then it's very good, you know? And so this is one of those situations where it's just leaving exaltation. So I interpreted that as you just missed your window. You know what I mean? You just missed your good window, unfortunately. Um, so that's what I was trying to say here. When a planet was just exalted or just left that, it's very important from in the Prajna uh, system. Um, yeah, so. Mars also ruling the sixth house of debts. It can also mean the, oh, the 11th Lord is now going to apply to the house of debts of sixth house, which is the opposite of what you want. Um, so it's kind of uh, looked like there were some just undesirable things going on there with that. Um, and then you notice Saturn is in the second house. Not easy to gain resources or gain wealth when Saturn's in the second house house in the prajna i read the whole rest of it um which you always should do if you're you know being called to ask prajnas in a serious matter it deals with other people's money and things um but there and then k2 in the fourth that's the house of fortune so that can that's not really good to have a, have k2 there but we don't actually we don't really deal with Rahu or k2 in my opinion until the end of the prajna the old tajika texts don't even deal with Rahu or k2 so it's important to keep that in mind when you're doing a prajna. Rahu and Ketu, I do think are important, but they were left out for reasons and they weren't as important. So they were probably skewing people. And so it's better to, in my opinion, to do the whole prajna with just the seven planets, the classical seven planets, and then look at Rahu and Ketu at the end if you're still not sure. And then they'll usually fill it in. Um, and I think that's what that was indicating with that K2 in the fourth house of um, you know, no, this, this decision won't really make you very happy. Um, Jupiter also being, you know, not just a planet of investments, but the planet of happiness, um, and being in the 12th house and being, uh, separated from Mars. It's, it's just, so basically I said, no, it doesn't really look like you should, should invest at this time. It looks like you maybe just missed your good window. Um, I don't remember exactly what I said. Here's the answer. I wrote, don't invest right now. It would not be a gain. The good investment time had just ended. And he wrote me back to let me know it did make sense. Because because I said, but you know, this, this process is kind of confusing to me. So let, let me know what you think about that. He wrote back to let me know it made sense because he had just invested in this Coinbase, bought a crypto coin for $20, and it ended up growing to $200, like really quickly. So that's when he asked me again, if he should invest. Um, so that is why it sort of looked good. 
but it was actually just showing that he had just already invested and had a great deal. He got the best out of what he would get then. So if he had done any more, he would have been separating from the good gain. So that's why Jupiter and Mars are like this when he asks, because it means it's in the past, you see? So his good deal he got out of this was in the past. He maybe should have asked me before he invested at 20 and said, hey, I just invested 20. Should I, you know, is well, how is this going to go or should I invest more? Then I could have probably looked at a project and it probably would have been a different way at that moment. And it would have said, oh, my God, invest 200 and you'll make 2,000 or something. But um, unfortunately for both of us, he didn't ask that. Um, and, you know, oftentimes you only get karmically what you're merited to get. So unless you're merited to get an insane deal, then you're going to get what the Prajna says you're going to get a lot of times, you know? But anyways, uh, that that's why it almost sort of looks good, as you could see. Like Mars is applying to the 11th Lord, and that's really nice, you know? But it had just left its exaltation, and because of this Jupiter thing, it's really more implying that it was in the past, in my opinion. And um, so he got the best out of it then that he would get. He didn't tell me any of that when he first asked me. And this is another interesting thing. When you give a Prajna, if you feel like giving some extra information, maybe you should because it'll give, you know, it'll give me an easier job and therefore give you a more accurate answer. Um, but that's, you know, kind of depends. And some people, when they're getting a Prajna, they're just kind of feeling it out and testing out me as an astrologer before they're going to get other readings. They don't want to tell me anything except this one sentence, you know, and that's fine too. Uh, but so here's the thing is so once he told me that it all made more sense because he just told me he had bought one coin and saw it jump and asked me about buying another oh okay that sort of made sense but because i was still a little confused and i'm kind of friends with him i was like you know or you know we have a nice friendly relationship i said you know as a professional it says no but as a friend i feel like that is such a good deal you might want to buy another one you know what i mean um and so I, I, I almost felt bad saying that because then he did go and buy another one and then it dropped back down and he lost money. So that, uh, so this is kind of an interesting case where the astrology completely proved itself correct. You know what I mean? Because it said, no, don't do it. And then I accidentally somehow, you know, encouraged him even after that. Because that's the crazy thing about astrology is you can do this for 10 years um, or whatever, and still be kind of blown away by it being right so often. It, it still blows my mind, you know what I mean? And so even my, my rational, and I have to keep one foot in the rational world or else I'll be, I won't be a good astrologer. Um, and so my rational side will just catch me and be like, wow, really? <laughs> or like be really shocked or surprised. And, you know, the more you do astrology, the more you trust yourself and everything. Um, and you get better at all that. But anyways, this, for whatever reason, the gods or, you know, I felt inclined to say, I don't know, man, maybe you should just try to, you know, because for investment, that was a great investment. But it does get harder because then when it's at $200, then you have, it would have to grow so much more to make it worthwhile. So I really wasn't sure. But he did just kind of went ahead and go for it just to see. He invested, he bought another like half a coin or something and it dropped back down. And I think he still ended up gaining from the overall experience. He still gained some money, but he lost more of what he had just gained by trying to gain more. So the Prajna on this was, was completely accurate. Um, and it was about investing and finances, finances and all these important big sciency and you know mathematical logical things that all these you know academics and stockbrokers and business professionals love to write off astrology and think it has no value but here it goes having value all right so here is another really really interesting prajna okay so this is the question, where is my mom's lost car key? So uh, this was someone who asked me on behalf of their own mother. So you can do that as well. Even if you're not curious, the question you can ask on behalf of someone else, where is my mother's lost car key? So 
right away. Ascendant is fixed. It indicates no change. Um, Senate Lord is in the tenth, though. That's a good place for that's a productive action could be done here. Um, again, lost lost items are the fourth house. You would maybe think second house is movable objects, but the fourth is the treasured thing. So if it's a thing that you treasure and are attached to and are looking for, it's the fourth house. So moon was in the fourth house. So that's that's interesting. Moon is full. So there's a bright moon. There's brightness in the fourth house. So I feel like that indicates you could find it. Jupiter. Moon is applying to Jupiter. That's another great indication that, oh, it's applying to a benefit. Then they, I will be able to help them. A lot of times when I do the prajna, I just can't help them. Like someone asked me a prajna earlier, some point in the last year, um, you know, where is this thing? And K2 was in the fourth. And I was like, man, it's really well hidden. And I don't know if you might not even find it again. You know what I mean? Because it's really, it's really well hidden. If K2's there, if some other cool planet is blocking the fourth house, then it means you can't, you won't find the object. It's gone for good. Um, but no, we have the 12th Lord of Lost Things as a waxing uh, full moon, and it's applying to Jupiter. The, and Jupiter is basically me, like my ruling planet, my Atmakarka, are both Jupiter, Jupiter's in my ascendant, Jupiter's in my Upapada, the stronger Pada, Jupiter's on the Ascendant in the D60, and the Upada there, no, that's all it is for me. You know, so um, so I know I knew there, right right then, that, okay, um, I'm going to help him. You know what I mean? I'm going to go to help him. That gave me confidence. And, you know, you need to have confidence to do a good reading. Um, so, so far, things were going good. Other omens, other suggestions on this day, the, the suara, other things when I woke up, they were all suggesting auspicious answers as well to a person. Um, so I knew I could help them. Um, pull out my notes here. Yeah, I wasn't able to do this one um, at the time he asked, but about a week after, but it still spoke strongly to a lost object, which is fascinating. So I know some of you may, I thought for a long time, like, man, it's kind of weird to do projects because people ask me, but then I maybe don't read the email or see it for a long time. It's amazing. Maybe it is the Jupiter for me or something else, but for me, like whenever I just get the feeling to do a prajna or to go to do a prajna or I'm ready to do a prajna, that's the time that it says everything perfectly. So if you're gonna get it really into prajna, you have to have an element of trust in life and in overall, but you're probably not even watching this video if you don't have some element of that already. Um, so that's that's just a really fascinating thing, though. And I've talked to other astrologers about that. It's really neat. Um, so the Ascendant Lord, yeah, it goes to the 10th. I already mentioned that. Yeah, I already mentioned that. Yeah, Jupiter is, is delighting the sun. And then the moon applying to Jupiter also indicated I would help. Yeah, that's right. I already said that. Scorpio, yeah, this is this is some interesting stuff right here. Uh, um, Scorpio represents holes and caves, and represents the covered parts of the body. So, literally, it's called the covered part. I think at some point in Birhat Prashra Horashastra. So, when it was in Scorpio, I thought, oh, well, the lost item is covered by something or it's in a hole, like a little nook and cranny in the car. But I started feeling like it's not in the car, it's in, it's in their house. And um, it's, it's, you know, it's hidden, it's in a hole, it's in a nook and cranny. I definitely know that so far. Scorpio is the color brown. So I thought it's likely in a brown place. Scorpio rules the West, so it is in the West. Mars, the Lord of Scorpio, and therefore the Lord of the Object, is in Capricorn. Capricorn is the South, so it's in the Southwest. So I figured it must be in the Southwest part of their house or property, the area where you think it would be. Um, Mars is exalted, again, implying that it will be found. The lost object is in an exalted state, you know? Mars is in Capricorn, an Earth sign. So Earth signs represent ground level. So I know that now I know that the thing is at ground level. 
water signs represent something being below ground level, like um, like how water you know fills in beneath beneath the ground level or beneath sea level. We might even say. So I knew the item was at ground level or below ground level and covered up by something. Because again, that could just mean being below ground level means you know there's something over it and it's below that. Since Saturn was here with Mars, I figured it was being covered up by clutter or by trash or by dirty clothes or by like litter if we were was in the car. By this time I'd already kind of been thinking it was probably not there, but um, by, you know, I, I sometimes get more than one possibility. So I mentioned, first off, it could be in the car, but second, this is what I really think, blah, blah, blah. And this, that was the thing that ended up being true. But um, uh, yes, C covered up by trash, litter, or by some dirty laundry, you know, which is really common in a house. Um, like, and then also considered how sometimes our car keys are just left in our clothes from the day or two before, you know? But I figured they probably checked that, but I've mentioned that. Um, because it was logical that that could be happening. So I set a check there and also under any clothes left about. Um, and I thought it was in the, so I said, yeah, I think it's at the um, southwest part of the house at ground level or below and covered up by dirty clothes, clutter, or in a hole because of Scorpio. But I do think you will find it and is in brown. Could secondarily be in dark blue or modeled in a multicolored environment because that's what I use for Capricorn. Uh, I use Capricorn as dark blue um, or like variegated um, or just kind of when things are naturally kind of like a bunch of earth tones, um, like looking at the marsh or something. And, and Capricorn does rule marsh, so that's also why I think that. Um, but, uh, blah, blah, blah. And it is in the southwest part of the house. Yeah, I already covered. I already mentioned that. So yeah, so that that's this. This was just basically like the main conclusion. I think it's in the southwest part of the house at ground level or below, covered up, um, and you know just dig around in there and uh, and you know uncover it, and she'll probably find it. And so he, she wrote back, Corey, you were right on. My mom found her key. It was under her bed, ground level, covered by something, which is in the southwest part of the house. So the the her her you know, her bedroom was in the southwest part of the house and it was under her bed. So it was covered by something. It was under a brown bedspread on a brown carpet. And there was some dirty laundry on a couple of chairs nearby, but not on the floor covering it. So it was covered. It was in a hole sort of under the bed, you know? Um, it's kind of funny because like, you know, like monsters under the bed, you know, it sort of is like the Scorpio little environment. You know what I mean? Now I know that for sure, that under the bed, Things hidden under the bed are a Scorpio environment. And we could have assumed that, but that's what it was saying. That's where he found it. Um, so he said, yeah, amazing, great job, thank you, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, so that's just another really, really great example of um, how we can use Prajna to have really great practical results. And also, you know, Mars being the strongest planet this time, being exalted, Mars is the planet of logic. And all I did with this was like follow my step-by-step -step logical rules of Prajna that I've always followed and always loved. And I just like, it makes me so happy that I can do this because it's like, I don't know, it's just, it's really amazing when you see life communicating to you so clearly and you can see that there is a hidden logic and order behind the chaos of life. I think that's why a lot of us, uh, love astrology. So I hope you guys enjoy this example. Um, yeah, I'll try to bring up some more because I know I do a lot of, I, I get, I do a lot of speculative videos where I just kind of talk about concepts, but then I also like to do very technique centered videos so that I make sure you guys are learning astrology. All right. Take care you guys.